G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up a Lenovo IdeaPad S145-14IL. This came out in September 2020. So, a couple of years or a year and a half. As you can see, we're already missing a Phillips head screw here. We're missing a rubber foot over here. But I'll get in there with the Phillips head screwdriver. So those four at the front, I suspect, are going to be smaller than the rest of these. And I'm opening up just to have a quick look around inside. As you can see, we already have some form of physical damage right here. Already one screw out there, and this last one here. I'm going to need either a pry tool, or a flat bit of metal, or a business card, or an old debit card. And I find usually getting in there by here helps, so I usually put that in and then twist. In, no, not quite. Dig it a little bit further in the gap. There we go. Now my opening from there. And we're in. So from here we can see a few different things which I do, don't mind at all. So looking in here, we have solder DRAM, expansion DRAM, NVMe, Wi-Fi, removable fan, hard soldered charging port, oh, pardon, BIOS battery, and laptop battery. Also have the optional upgrade of a 2.5 inch drive here, with the cable going to the motherboard included. Granted we are missing the screws, but that's a trade-off I'm happy to have. So let's, to begin with, I will go over how to disconnect your battery and how to remove your battery. So if you're wanting to upgrade your RAM, this very well may be necessary or recommended, so you may hopefully cause no damage as you swap it over. So I've just undid three screws. Next up, we've got here, where I'm gonna use my nail, pry into the gap and pull it. go. As you see, that's just pulled it out. Now, if I just lift this up and fold it over, there we go. Looking on here, if I can get you in focus, there is just a little bit of a lip along here. That's where I managed to get my nail. So you want to at least disconnect the battery. You don't have to fully remove it. To cover upgrading the RAM, there's two metal tabs here. They fold out and the RAM flicks up. And you should just be able to lift it up. There is a small notch here. So when you go to install your RAM, do take note of where that notch is down here and on here. So right now we've got four gig, so we've got probably two, this is probably four gig already soldered onto the board, bring it up to eight in dual channel mode. I'm gonna put that in on a 45 degree angle and then pull down and the tabs are gonna clip over the top. So that's in. The gold bits are now hidden, and then I'm going to push down. And both these went up and over. Now that's latched in. Next up, NVMe over here. So this is your storage. I'll move the thermal pad out of the way. We see that we are a 250 gig SK Hynix, built in August 2020. Undo the screw here. It's going to lift up. And then that also just pulls back. As you can see, we have a single notch here, corresponds with there, similar to the RAM, 45 degree angle, fold down. So 45 degree angle. So let's say you upgraded it to a larger drive. You may have to move this pin here, or this screw here, down to here, as most SSDs that you do purchase so for example, a KC250, as you can see, we are of a longer length. So that means this bit here would go to there. So you may have to remove that. that put it back in, 45 degree angle, push into the golds now hidden, push down. And as you see, it's popped out a little bit, so I'll push it down, push it in a bit further. 
and now it sits in snug right up to here. So from here I'm going to be able to screw that back in. Move the thermal pad back on top as that does help evenly just uh, transfer and distribute the heat. If you have a look on the back of the bottom half we can see we have this bit of copy here so that's going to heat up and spread the heat around that area. These pads that help push down the hard drive. Really not much else of interest there. Do have this section here for it to make contact. One bit of plastic broken. Makes contact along here. A bit on the copper pipe up here. Always one thing they recommend doing is checking the tightness of the screws here as these do like to wiggle loose on the hinges. Do note if you do damage your charging port, you, the repairer will have to fully remove the main board to then replace the port over here that's soldered in. And that covers pretty much most things. If you do want to replace your thermal paste, you'll have to undo these four screws, twist it lightly, and that should be able to be lifted out. As I was looking at the damage earlier, it does seem to have bent in the heat pipe here. It doesn't look to have broken it. It's definitely bent it, which is not good. So from here, I'm going to put the battery back in. I'll push it in first over here. It will give me a bit of wiggle room. So I'm just going to line it up loosely and then pull it forward. And that's now reconnected it. Now put those three screws, mounting screws, back into position. One, two, and we'll go over here. I'm pretty sure that is it. Three. Zoom out a bit so you guys can see what's going on. So from here, with all that pretty much sorted out, we should be able to put the back cover on. Which I'm not sure if there's a special technique to this one. Usually I just line it up over the top and then start in a corner and pinch down. Should hear some noises like that. And then from there, once you're happy with that, if you do need to squeeze it some more, fold it open so you don't damage the screen and then work your way around again. From here, you have the four smaller screws along the front. One, two, three, four. And then the remainder of the screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, go across there. And that is how you open up and replace your, pretty much your NVMe, your RAM, your battery, and a few other things in the ID Pad S145. Hope this helps and see you later.